Okay, in this video I want to take a look at a common question, how long does it take to buy a house? Or indeed, how long does it take to sell a house? Obviously there's two parties, at least on each side of the equation, when there's a property being bought and sold essentially at the same time. So how long does it take? It really depends. It really depends and that's not being trite. Let's just say for the sake of argument that I'm representing the purchaser in a particular transaction. And let's say that we go sale agreed and I'm acting for the purchaser and the purchaser has been in touch with me and they've instructed me to act on their behalf and I'm ready to rock. I'm all dressed up, uh, ready to go and nothing happens. What do I mean by nothing happens? I mean the contracts and the title documents are not issued by the vendor's solicitor. For whatever reason, they are not issued for a period of time. That is something that's completely and utterly out of my hands. There's absolutely nothing I can do until I receive contracts and title documents, copy title. So that's the first variable. Me acting as the purchaser solicitor, I'm completely dependent on the vendor solicitor doing his or her thing. He or she may be waiting for title documents from the bank and he or she may have been instructed by his client very late in the day. Once I do receive contracts and once I do receive copy title documents, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do and that is review very carefully the contracts and the title documents and review the title that's being offered for sale. So that is going to involve me raising certain questions and queries in respect of the contract and or the title documents and the title that's being offered. Again, I'm completely dependent on the vendor or solicitor responding to my queries, giving me satisfactory replies to the queries. He or she may be fast in doing so, may be very responsive, or may have to take his client's instructions, or may have to make further inquiries, or may have to get on to the revenue commissioners to get a certificate in relation to LPD may have to get onto the local authority and get a certificate in relation to either planning or perhaps NPPR, non-principal private residence tax, may need to get an architect or engineer out to do a statutory declaration about a particular uh, development that was carried out or a certificate of um, exemption or a certificate of compliance. So there's any number of reasons or any number of queries rather that I can make and I need satisfactory answers in order to do a decent job for my client and not get sued for professional negligence. As I say, I'm dependent then on how quickly the other party is able to give me satisfactory replies. Once we have satisfactory replies, then we can sign the contract, return it, and proceed to the next step. However, my client is probably going to be borrowing money. I do have some cash purchasers, obviously, but most people will borrow money because it's a significant purchase, a significant investment, and we have to deal with the bank. So again, the bank is not going to release any money until its conditions are satisfied, especially in relation to life insurance and home insurance and any other conditions that they might have. For example, they may be checking up on the employment status of my client, the borrower, and may be looking for some up-to-date wages, slips and so on to ensure that nothing has changed since the first application was made and granted. So again, you're looking at perhaps another delay there, something that is again completely beyond my control. I have no say over it. I can't complete the sale until the bank release the money. So when the bank do release the money, then the vendor solicitor must prepare the closing documents and send them to me to be held in trust or we need to make arrangements to complete. Assuming that the vendor can clear off out of the house and hand over vacant possession, we're off to the races in terms of completing the sale. However, if the vendors, uh, or if the vendor is actually buying on or trying to get a replacement purchase or even a home or property to rent, then that could delay it further. So you can see from beginning to end, there is a great deal of variables and Many of the variables are completely beyond the control of the purchasing solicitor, for example, and obviously the vendor solicitor, if I was acting for the vendor, 
I'm going to have the same problem insofar as I may send out contracts and title documents quickly. I may not hear anything from the purchaser solicitor because the purchaser solicitor may be prudently waiting for a loan offer to issue from the purchaser's lending institution and so on. So again, it's a bit like playing tennis or playing any field sport where one team is required to belt the ball over the net or kick the ball out. It takes two to party, it takes two to tango. You can't do it on your own, whether you're acting for the purchaser or for the vendor, you can't do it on your own. You are dependent on the other side doing their thing and providing you with satisfactory replies and responses to queries and so on. So that's why it's very, very difficult to give a definitive answer as to how long it's going to take. It could take anything from four weeks to four months, quite frankly. I suppose a decent enough average, although it would only be a very rough average, would be something like six to eight weeks. You could allow that sort of time frame. But there is exceptions both ways. There's exceptionally fast ones. There's exceptionally slow ones. So, you know, you'd probably, in all fairness, be looking at something like eight weeks anyway that you'd want to allow and you hope then to beat that if you're going to be a quick one and if you're going to be a slow one then you need to be prepared for that but as I say oftentimes there's not a whole pile that any individual can do because you are dependent on the other links in the chain and the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Hope you find this video useful. I hope I've explained how and why it's difficult to be definitive and be uh, completely prescriptive about how long conveyance will take because it really will depend on every single individual transaction. Hope you find the video useful. If you do, I'd appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.